trigger warning, this video is not for you if you do not like seeing snakes, insects, spiders, and all that stuff. It does also contain a tour of some amazing, amazing plants with Ruperob, but I am planning to visit them after my holiday in Costa Rica when it will just be their plants and no reptiles. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you can hear me because I'm at a big fair full of plants and also reptiles and stuff. If you're new here, my name is Rose. My pronouns are she, her. You can find me on Instagram here. And I thought I would just show you some of the bits and pieces because I just walked in and I already saw snakes for the first time, IRL and huge insecty buggy things. And also my friends are here with plant stands. So I hope the audio is okay. I am using my mic, so hopefully you can hear me properly. Let's go check out some weird ass insects and reptiles and plants like these huge snails. But also, I was very captured, captivated by this, I don't know what it is, a, a million leg person thingy. The name is here. But these bugs are so big. Whoa. Imagine having that in your terrarium. <laughs> and look, it's a snake. What the hell? I've never seen a snake before. Hello, buddy. I know people have these as pets, but they creep me out a lot. But also they fascinate me. Look how beautiful that is though. Do you guys like snakes and stuff? I'll put a warning up at the beginning of this video for people who do not like. Look, so many snaky babies. And one of my friends who is a biologist and a reptile expert, she said it looks maybe sad because they're in such small boxes but they actually feel much more safe in a small box than they do in a big space and look at these guys bearded dragons or something hello buddy look at these turtles they are so beautiful and markings and everything little babies we have chameleons First time seeing a chameleon IRL. Look at that. <gasps> I have to admit that ooh, seeing those chameleons in the tiny boxes trying to get out is a little bit upsetting. <gasps> Look at this one. Hello, buddy. You can't see it, but it's beautiful colors walking really fast past the feeding animals, which ugh, this is why I do not want a reptile. I don't want to feed live bugs. In the meantime, I'm looking for my friends, Lupero, but I can't find them. There's so many stands. Five minutes later. Here is Ruth. I finally made it to the Lupero stand plants again, which is nice for my brain, even though I'm still looking at some, uh, what are they called? I forget the word, reptiles. <laughs> So let's look at the begonias. So in the first box, they brought a lot of boxes. So stay tuned. Also Sander is here who helped me a lot with my terrarium. But here in the back, this is begonia dindui, right? Very nice and shimmery. And this is the, oh, I forgot. Variabilis, okay. And then the, ne the one next to that, is that the other one with the imperialis? Interfolia, oh geez. Can we draw some of your favorites? Yes. And they're already quite big. The Margravia El Coca babies. And I guess this box is just a mix of a lot of things. You see a nice uh, Chloronura Chlorosticta red form. And what is this one? This is different. Ah, oh, yeah. They look very different, the Variabilis. And then this one is more, a bit more mature, maybe. Uh, no, it's different than Variabilis. Okay. They still come here, yeah, but they qualified by the patch. This is what they call patch 2. Okay. And I think they believe they qualify this as green stripe. But, um, okay, so they are different yeah. types. Nice. Um, here is more chloronura. Just and little flowers as well. We can make babies at the fair. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah. That one works well in my terrarium. The, the chloronura. Chlorosticta, I keep saying them wrong, green form versus the red form. You can see the difference quite nicely here, even though the lighting is not 
ideal in a big fair space. These are some pipers. And I don't know what this is, but it's very pretty. Oh. We were photo shooting them yesterday, so but they are we don't sell them. They are from the okay. import. They are still uh, being made for the future. This is very nice. I like the velvety look a lot. More pipers. Ooh, look at this. Is this uh, La Bicia Pumila? Or is it a different one? It's a real one, but I think it's a very dark... Uh, yeah. yeah, it's hard to show because it's already a little bit dark here, but it's super dark. Really nice. All the babies. How much are these? 50 euros. 50 euros, that's not a lot. That's very affordable. <laughs> I looked at her to check if she was sure. <laughs> And then these are the Lichenura, the little tiny begonias that are adorable and could work really well crawling on my terrarium floor. So I have my eyes on this still for the future. How much are these? 40. 4 zero. Good prices, dude. Here's a big real, really nice. It's actually growing out of the little thing. And an Elocasia. Um, Farigata. I'm forgetting words now because... Macorita. Oh, these are really nice and pink. What are these? Rosia Puntata. Right? With the Tata at the end. Yeah. I really like this one. And the... Im, not Imperialis, but Integrofolia. Okay. I'm learning, I'm learning. Oh, this is pretty too. Is this something else? Is that Nico Census? Uh, oh yeah, okay, so it, it starts out this way and then becomes that. Yeah. Interesting. Looks like a completely different plant. Lots of sonorilla as well. Very cute. And they worked a lot on these. They grew a lot of them out. I had some questions before of them importing them and then flipping them, but that is not the case. They take a lot of effort <laughs> to grow these out and take a lot of time. These are very slow, but very beautiful. This looks cool as well. What is this? Oh, really? Yes. Sonorilla from Borneo. That's very cool. It looks like a begonia because it's so um, angled. The leaf is not the same. Do you know what I mean? They have like school leaves. Yeah, a little. This is Q2. What is this one? Good question. It's not an SP trunk, but it will turn out like a kind of turtle leaf. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's what it looks like a little bit already. So it's not SP. I don't know if you guys can hear because the mic is only on me. <laughs> But it's like an SP trunk, a little bit like a turtle leaf. This is also variabilis. I always like these leaves, but then when they go like this, I'm kind of over it. Whoops. Uh, more Dindui, more Lebisia, which are now actually Emblemanta, right? Yeah, Emblemanta. Yeah, I, the second part I forgot. But I say to the people, I will just use Lebisia name, but this is the original. Yeah, beautiful. And look at this one. They're growing nicely, still going well. Oh, and a little Dracobelta down here. Look at that, so cute. That's the Capua Zulu, it's very popular at the moment. This one? Yeah. Ah, how do you say the name was? Capua Zulu. Capua Zulu. <laughs> I'm repeating everything you say, just to make sure that the mics are okay. The next box is again full of lots of different beautiful leaves. I spot a species China, I think. I have that in my terrarium from, uh, from him. Oh, and a little Chloronura, which I keep saying wrong, but this is an actual Chloronura. They have been cut around the same time as you made your cuttings. Yeah, they're, they're growing a little bit faster than mine then. And what's this one? Do you know? Is this a... Milano Bulata. Nice. More... Oh, geez. I already forgot again. Variabilis. And then this is the Integrifolia. Okay, I'm learning, I'm learning. Let's see, what else? We have some silvery, pinkish ones. Nice looking. Marlin's Mystery. Oh, here's more Species China, which I really like. Big ones. I don't know what they are. What are do you know what this is? Or is it a mystery? A sp species. And this is the Pteridiformis? The small one is the big one. It's a Taiwanese. Taiwanese? Okay. <laughs> cute, cute, cute. And then this red one, I think that's the ember or something. Yeah more pink. I think we've seen most of this. Oh, here's a bigger Chloronero so you can appreciate how beautiful these are. Next box. We're going quick because we also have to look at some weird-ass snakes and stuff. <laughs> bigger Dracopeltas. 
And these, everything that's left over, you'll sell on the web shop as yes, well yes. after? Milano Bulata. Mm -hmm. Variables. Perfect. And then little, that looks like a... It's um, St. Pauli, yeah. Sander's gonna look up the name for us. I ask all the different quest difficult questions. Ooh, is this... No. The Lidi. Beludi? Lidi. Lidi. It looks a little bit like the Jiwui, but yeah. opposite yeah. colors. Primulina Sino Vietnamica. Okay. <laughs> nice. Okay. And a really hairy one that actually looks pink from the side. Look. Oh, wow. Look at this. Do you know the name of this? SP Brown. SP Brown. Well, okay. That makes sense. It's brown. And these ones are very cool as well. Very cool. Very. Very nice. Very nice. Moving on to the last box. Oh, look. Chloros. Chlorosticta, red form. Oh, this one looks nice. We're going to show this in the light of the neighbors. Look at that. Oh, hello. <laughs> they grew so many of these and they look so happy and mine was very dead quite quickly. So you guys really have a skill for growing begonias. Is this the me? Oh, the name I forgot. I think I have a cutting of this from somewhere with the like dark, it's almost black front and then the red backs. Very nice, we'll ask Sander in a second. This is very pink as well. Do you know what this is? Yes, Sander can tell you the okay. name as well. Okay, Sander! <laughs> Sander is talking to some other people, so <laughs> we'll have to wait with the names for a sec. All the flowers as well, very cool. That's basically all the ripper robe plants. Woo! I think someone is buying this huge snake. Look at this. This is crazy it's beautiful but it's going in the bag oh bye buddy Sander came out with the names Sika King is where is it this one it's beautiful I really like this it's nice I've never seen it before and then this one is the Mela Chroma Meta Chroma I always say it wrong and this one do we know this one as well Afayensis I have so many questions this one Silver dollar. Silver dollar? No, 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 silver lace, I'm sorry. Silver lace. It looks very cute. Oh, it's focusing on the flowers. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Thank you, Sander. Thank you, Rit. Okay, let's continue looking at some animals. Ooh, look. Oh, they're so small. I didn't know these were so small. Maybe they're babies. Look, this is my finger. Can you see them? It's a bit hard. <gasps> So pretty! Oh, these would look cool in my terrarium. Lots of bearded dragon type things. Hello, buddy! Oh, this is a big one. Hi! I hope you're okay. Oh. I also have a lot of isopods, like the ones that I have in my terrarium. But you can't really see them, they're in little boxes and I think they're hiding, unfortunately. Ooh, a snake. <sighs> Plants again, that makes me happy. I have a lot of cool stuff like moss, but also begonias and hoyas, hoya and bracata right here. And aeroids as well, they have a lot. But of course here they are mostly focused on terrarium, so lots of um, bromeliads and stuff and ferns. I bought my um, not this one, this is an orchid. But you know the, the blue fern that I have? Uh, it's called micro something something. The, the blue fern, the metallic fern. I bought that from this shop at a fair. Lots of begonias. Over on this side also um, carnivorous plants. Lots of them. Really big ones. Oh, holy shit. We have to look from the other side. Look at this leaf. You can't even see it because it's far away, but it is the biggest cupria leaf I've ever seen. And I actually just spoke to the owner and he told me it's a different form, which is why it gets so big. So that might be why mine is not like that at all. 
just lots of very <laughs> different looking plants that you don't often see. Interesting. When I came in, these were the first snakes that I saw. They're now a little bit sleepy. I like that they have a little black so they can hide away in there from the people if they don't feel like it. But when I came in, they were all looking at me like this. How cute. Hello, buddy. Hello. I never saw these before in real life and I actually do agree that they do look very cute, which I never thought I would say. So, there we go. Mission accomplished. I saw snakes. Ha. I was looking at the cool terrarium plants and stuff, like they have all the, the sticks and everything, and I realized it's Terra Tete, who I already contacted before about growing moss for the terrariums, which unfortunately wasn't super successful in my case because my tank is a little bit too dry, but they have some very cute and tricky plants. Look, favorite. And all the little orchids and ferns and stuff. And then all the terrarium fancy things to make it look nice. I should have gotten a few of these for mine to make it, the waterfall would look a lot cooler with this. And look, a uh, stick with moss on it. Very nice. This one is also really pretty. So yeah, very nice. These guys have a lot of tiny, beautiful frogs. I'm gonna zoom a little bit and hopefully you can see them. The colors are amazing. This is blue and red. These guys are fully blue. Hi, buddy. And then this is a really, really big frog. <laughs> Look at that yeah, guy. Was like he was moving before, it's so creepy. Yeah, well, he's and these guys are the really small ones. Look how beautiful that is. Can you see? Yeah. No, the reflection is... It's hard to show you, but they are stunning. And they're just chilling, like, folded up. Whoa. Another fat one. And then some, I don't know what it is, some kind of lizardy gecko thing. And some snakes. Warning, if you are scared of spiders, skip this part, because I'm gonna film some spiders. I don't know what that means. But they are big ass spiders. Look at this guy. Can you see him? More froggy babies as well. Over on this stand, Frisian frogs, I found the most beautiful tiny frogs that you can actually kind of see in these pots. They're more visible. Look at the metallic. And this guy over on this side, I don't know if I'm allowed to touch them, so. <laughs> Look at this. The colors are amazing. Okay. Check these guys out, they're so cute. Ooh, and I need this, I need this. Ah, focus. These are um, springtail colonies and I definitely need them for my terrarium. So, ha, huh, I would have overlooked that if I had not been pulled here by the little froggies. Hello, buddies. Look at these. I think it's a gecko, I don't know. Beautiful colors. Hi, buddy. Oh, are these the crested geckos? Yes. Someone recommended these to me because they do not need um, live feed. You can give them little little bits of fruit paste or something. This one is beautiful too. Wow, hello, everyone's looking at me. Sorry, I don't want to be scary. Hanging over you. Oh. These are also Pac-Man frogs, he calls them. And I think it's the same as the big one that we saw, but cooler colors. So many cool colors. Nature is amazing. Oh, hello. Hello. 
I bought some springtails for my terrarium. I ended up with two pieces of the barky stuff, tree fern bark pieces to grow some plants on in my terrarium as advised by Terra Ted. He is an expert. And I also have a few begonias, <laughs> which I will show you once I get home from the amazing people at the Hooperoop. Ah, not sponsored. <sighs> okay, after about two hours of time in public transport, I made it home. And I just wanted to show you the things that I got because it's quite exciting. First of all, this is very messy. So I'm just gonna show you from here. I got some pieces of tree fern, tree fern pieces for in the terrarium. According to Terra Ted, they hold a lot more moisture. So when I put them in there, I can plant some more plants that need some more high, Maggie, high humidity. And also I just got home. I haven't even seen the cats yet. Hey, my baby. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Oh. So I can plant some plants on the tree fern bark that need more humidity and then they can hopefully survive in the terrarium. So I'm gonna build those in. Then I'm gonna turn you around for the plants. Not just plants, these are my springtails. Can you see them? They're gonna make my terrarium healthy and happy. So many of them, really nice culture. Then three, four plants. I'm so blessed and lucky. Look at this first. This is a type of Sonorilla, just species. They didn't know what it was. The backs are very purple and apparently it's very nice to grow in a terrarium. And it has little flowers as well, a little hairy plant. Then, let's see, this is a Chlorosticta red form again, which I had a tiny baby but I killed it and I got a new one. Pretty big and happy. I think I'm gonna keep it in, not in the big terrarium for a little while to see how it settles and then maybe I can take a propagation and put that in the big terrarium just to make sure that I keep it alive this time. The red is so beautiful against the light as well. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> this next one, I forgot the name, but it's a small one of one of the ones that I showed you on the tour. And I don't know if I can show you, but it's so silvery. These leaves are more crystally than a crystallinum. So this gets quite big leaves, but it should grow nicely on the terrarium floor. And it also will get a little bit of pink on the silver when I give it enough light. So we have to find a nice spot for it. And it seems to be two plants together and a bit of moss as well. And then lastly, I have this one, which I got from Sander, my friend that was there. He gave me a tiny baby propagation of a Begonia Raja, which was definitely on my wish list. It's still very small, but I like it that way because then it gives you extra satisfaction when it grows out. I think I'm also going to keep this in the separate, um, not the big tank for now to make sure that it grows out nicely. And I can't wait to see it mature. Definitely look this up as a mature plant because it looks so beautiful. I like it. Now let's say hello to the cats. Hello Maggie. I missed you, my baby. I'm so happy to see some fluffy animals again. After that whole day of reptiles and, and frogs and all the weirdo animals and creepy spiders and yeah, I definitely prefer simple fluffy cats and dogs. Hi. It's been a few days since I was at the fair and I have contacted some of my friends and reptile experts to check if what I was feeling was correct. And they did say, even though the animals do feel safer in smaller boxes, it does give them a lot of stress and it is really kind of sad at the fairs, the being dragged all over the place in the small boxes. Not necessarily that the small boxes are an issue, but they don't have anywhere to hide because the, the tops are see-through and they are not protected from the light, the people, the loud noises. So I did feel that right. It was fascinating to see. I really am glad that I went and that I saw these animals IRL for the first time but it also was a little bit sad to see and to realize how many of those animals were just being dragged from fair to fair in the little boxes. Sterin, one of the people that I reached out to said that there is actually a really good shop in Breda. I think it's called the Arde, which is a reptile shop where you can see the animals in their natural state where they're not stressed and where they're taken care of very well. So if you're interested in that, I could do a video there. Let me know in the comments. I'm by no means gonna be a reptile 
channel. <laughs> I'm all about the plants and the fluffy animals, but I thought it would be maybe nice to show you what it could be like. So let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't too creepy. I'm getting kisses. This is really nice. Thank you, Mickey. Mwah. If you enjoyed it, please give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit it down below. Mickey, don't attack me. <laughs> I selected a few more videos for you to watch if you want to watch more planty content. A little bit more planty than this one, probably. And I will see you again very soon. Thanks so much, friends. Thanks for hanging out with me. Bye!